Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on Facebook. I'm sorry we're a few minutes late. It seems like it's really busy today on Facebook Live, but happy Friday. Um, I'm here today at the Bell Museum, and we are continuing our celebration and getting ready for Halloween. And today we have a special treat for you. Jennifer Menken, our Touch and See Lab coordinator, is in the Touch and See Lab today, and she is going to be teaching us all how to draw a bat in preparation for Halloween. So grab a piece of paper or cardboard or whatever you have around and your favorite coloring utensil, and you can follow along. We're going to learn more about bats and do that step-by-step -step sketch. Thanks for joining us today, Jennifer. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so we're going to draw a bat. Um, we're going to be a little generic. It's going to be a bat. We're not going to draw a specific bat. We're not going to draw a long-nosed bat or a short-eared bat or a little brown bat, um, but we're going to draw a bat. And um, I'm going to use two drawing utensils. You can use one, um, but I'm going to do this so that everybody can see and follow along. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a lighter color um, as the under drawing, because what we're going to do is I'm going to show you where all the lines go and why they're where they are on our bat. And then I have a darker color that I'm going to use to do the detail work over the top of it. So, we're gonna start, um, this is my example. Your example might not look like just like this, this is fine. Um, we're just gonna teach you the pieces that you need to do and then you can draw all the bats you want after this. So, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna give you a little uh, sort of introduction here. I have a bat, I have a taxidermy bat. This is our big brown bat. So this is what we're gonna try and draw, but we're gonna draw it more like it's flying. So bats are pretty simple structures underneath. Um, so we're gonna start with, you're gonna draw a circle and then you're gonna draw something that kind of looks like a cigar or a long tipped oval. So that's the start of our bat. That's kind of the body structure underneath. Um, but now we need to figure out kind of where in the body the skeleton goes. And bats have a skeleton that has most of the same bones that we do. Here's our skeleton. We're gonna look at it again in here in a minute, but here's a bat skeleton. Um, so we're gonna figure out where everything needs to go. Now it's a vertebrate, which means it has a backbone. Um, so we're gonna actually run a line all the way through our, the center here. And it's gonna come down and come out a little bit from the bottom. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna draw one about, I don't know, a third of the way down, maybe a little bit less in the top of the body. We're gonna draw one about a third of the way up in the bottom of the body. Now these are really important because this is our basically what amounts to our spinal column. This is our shoulders. And this is the hips. And so now we're gonna do the under places for the arms or the wings in this case, because their wings are just modified arms and a modified hand. Um, so I'm gonna show you on one side and then we'll, I'll do it real quick on the other side. So I'm gonna just do a little circle here. That's the top of my shoulder. So if you look at your arm, you have shoulder, we have elbow, we have wrist and we have hand. So we're gonna have all those people. So shoulder, we're gonna have our elbow. So we're gonna do a line, kind of doing connect the dots here to our elbow and up to our wrist. And then the rest of it is the hand. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. So this is our a hand, this is our skeleton. Um, they have the same number of fingers, but they don't all hang out like ours do. They aren't all separate. So we're gonna have, there's gonna be a little line up here. That's our thumb. So I have a little tiny thumb. And then the second and the third finger are kind of together. So we're gonna do line out, line down. And then we're gonna do another line and they kind of go next to each other. So that's our, that's our outer, Wing. I'm a little bit off screen here. There we go. So that's finger two and finger three. So we, now we need, we look at our skeleton again. Here's our opportunity to look at the skeleton again. So those are the two outer bones on the side here. 
Um, in this case, they're so they're so fragile and so tiny that when you take the skin off of them, they kind of separate. But when the skin is over the top, they're they're together. So we're gonna have to do the next two fingers. So we're gonna do finger one. So that's finger three. No, one. Okay, one, two, three, four, and finger five. Here we go. So I'm gonna do that real quick on the other side. So I've got my dots to dots going here. And we'll repost this so that you can follow along, you know, if, if I'm going too fast for you right now. So there we have all of, we have all of our understructure, all of our sort of bones in place, except we're still missing something. We're missing the hips and the legs. So this is our, this is, would be where our hips are. And this is the, the top of the legs, the, the top joint. So again, here's a look at our, our skeleton. So got the top, you got where your thighs meet, where your, where your, meet, where your uh, femur meets the pelvic bone. Um, and then the next joint down is knees. So we're gonna, we're gonna do knees. So we're gonna do a knee. I'm going to do it on both sides here, knee. And then below that, we're going to come down. So the joint on the bottom would be the ankles. And then we would have the feet coming off of there. So, all right, we have all of the individual little pieces. Now we're going to add the details. So um, if we look at the head, Bats come in a huge variety. We have bats that have really big ears. We have bats that have really small um, eyes. But some of them have what's called a leaf on their nose. Um, all of it is designed uh, and adapted so that they can uh, pick up more sound. Um, most of the bats we have, um, the 1400 species in the world, most of them use echolocation uh, to find their food, which is they project out really loud or high pitched sounds that then bounce back and form images in their head. Um, there are some bats that use mostly sight, things like fruit bats would use mostly sight. So depending on what you're doing, depending on the type of bat you're going to do, uh, I'll use my little sketch here um, from previous. Uh, I decided to give my bat really, really big ears, like a long-eared bat um, and a little tiny sort of pug-like doggy nose. Um, so we're gonna, we'll do, I'll do those real quick details and then we'll go over and do sort of fill in all the spaces. So um, we need eyes. So we're just gonna do one on either side. Most, like I said, most bats have little eyes. They don't use a lot of eyesight, they're nocturnal. Um, if it was a fruit bat, those eyes might be almost the size of the skull. So we could do a much bigger um, set of eyes. We're gonna do ears. Now I'm gonna give them more Minnesota bat-like ears. So these got a little bit smaller ears. And they go, they have really deep kind of curved ears. So that little line there just kind of indicate that there's a curve. And then there's a part of the ear in front of that, which is a little piece that comes up that's called the tragus. And that helps um, again, direct sound so that they can find the direction of their food. Uh, we're also going to give them a little nose. We're going to start with the nostrils. We're going to give them a little dot on either side for the nostrils. And then depending on what kind of nose shape, um, we'll give them a little kind of like a pig snout. I could also add a little bit of height here and give him a leaf on his nose. Tilt that a little bit. So you can see if I get a little bit there. All right, and then needs a mouth. Um, we're gonna give him kind of an upside down smile, kind of like a kidney bean. And that gives us sort of the general outer shape of the mouth. Um, and they have pretty big mouths because they're trying to, you know, catch insects on the wing. All right, I'm gonna switch out. 
So if you were drawing with this one thing, you know, this would be a very light sketch and then you can go over it. Or if you're drawing in pencil and then you want to go over with pen and then you can erase the pencil lines, you could do that. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I got a big old black shark Sharpie here um, so that I'm just going to start adding in the important details that we missed. Um, so uh, I'm just going to fill it in now. I don't have a lot of time to do little individual nicely drawn hairs. So I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and make a little jagged edge and then do from the ears down. Um, usually on bats, you can't really see their kind of their neck. They're not as defined as say a giraffe, which has a very defined neck, um, but they can still turn their head just fine. Um, we're going to go a little bit across the top and I'm going to, Make my ears a little bit more defined here. Fill in. I'm gonna put a couple lines here that makes it look a little bit deeper too. Um, I'm gonna make my nose, make my nostrils a little bit bigger here. Doop, doop. A little, little trick with eyes, instead of filling them all in, making them completely dark, yet leave just a little bit of a white spot, that makes it look more like they're a little, like they're alive. Um, and we'll do a little close up when I'm done drawing all the things here. So I'm just gonna give him a little kind of poofy extra pieces of hair here. And then the mouth. Um, most of our bats being insect eaters have little tiny teeth. They're really good at catching insects with them. So I'm going to give them a couple little tiny teeth. Um, if you think about another type of bat, things like vampire bats, they actually have teeth that are right in the front, like two big teeth right in the front because they use those to scrape the skin open so that they can drink the blood. Um, vampire bats are really rare. They're not common. You're not going to find them in Minnesota. You're going to have to go to Central or South America to find those. Um, all right. So now we're going to add on to our arms. So we have, again, the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Um, you can, in the wing, you can actually see these bones. So we're going to do an outline kind of on either side, so you can kind of see where the bone is. But there is a piece of the wing membrane that goes in front. Um, so you're gonna add a little piece of wing membrane on the front, and I'll repeat that on the other side. Just doing these little fast little jagged things to represent kind of fur. Depending on where the bats are found, that fur, they might have a lot of fur in those areas, sometimes that not so much. Um, Show you a little close up on one of our wings. My my little bat's a little worse for wear. They're actually very fragile. So my taxidermy bat has a little, couple holes in his wings, but the wings are this very fine skin that is stretched between them. All right, we're gonna go on the other side. We have a little thumb here. The thumbs usually have a little claw on them. That's what they use to kind of hold on and move around on the cave wall or on a branch or on some bark if they're on a tree. Um, and then we're gonna come follow uh, down the edge. Um, for some bats, you can see the space between these wings. So I'm gonna actually add that little, or between these bones, I'm just gonna actually add that in there so you can kind of see it. And you can highlight these bones a little bit more too. So if, if you think of fingers, there'd be a lot of bones in here. And we're not gonna draw every single one of them. One of the other names for this, this is called the patagium. It's the skin that's stretched and they can stretch them quite wide. Um, our biggest bat in Minnesota, um, the red bat is about eight inches across, so it's not the biggest bat in the world. Uh, flying foxes can be almost four feet across. Um, and those are found like New Caledonia, uh, Northern Australia, um, parts of Asia. So I'm gonna just 
pretend that my skin, those, those wings are kind of pulled in a little bit. So my, my skin is going to have a little bit of a fold in it because it's not fully outstretched. I'll repeat that on the other side. Again, I'm going to leave, put in a little you know, extra mark there. Now, if I was doing this with a lighter color, you wouldn't be seeing these underlines when we're done. But because I want you all to be able to see the structure, those are still there. I think if Amber's watching the chat, if somebody's got a bat question, I could answer a bat question or any suggestions while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna just quick do that. All right, now we're to the sort of the hips in the middle. Um, bats are furry kind of all, all over their body. So I'm gonna continue my whole little jaggedy fur lines down the side here. Um, maybe even a little bit out into the out onto the thighs. This would be their their thighs. Um, we could also, you know, add some more kind of all the way down. If I was going to spend more time, I would probably be doing kind of individual hairs, but I'm not going to spend the whole time doing that. We'd be, we'd be here for like six hours if I did that. <gasps> so, all right, so we're gonna get to the knee. And then down to the ankle. There's an extra little bone on the ankle here. And then the feet. And they have four toes, four or five toes. Actually four. And do that. Now the, the toes themselves are actually important to some bats. If this was a fishing bat, so a bat that actually flies and catches fish off the surface of the water, those toes are really, really long and have really long claws at the end because they actually lift those fish up out of the water and then they throw them into their mouth. Um, and they're really cool. If you're If you ever get a chance to sleep on a beach that has fishing bats around it, you can actually see them uh, echolocating off of the ripples in the water, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna add up my legs here, long bones, long fragile bones. So we got more patagium, more skin that goes to the foot. And then also depending on your bat, they have a diff different lengths in tail. There are long tailed bats um, they're short tail bats. And there's some bats that don't really even have much of a tail. Uh, if I was going to do a vampire bat, I would actually just make a little C here. There would be no tail. Um, vampire bats don't need a tail. They don't need to be able to fly and change direction as well in, um, in free flight because they're not catching insects um, in the air. Um, in fact, vampire bats are also cool. They're one of the few bats that can land on a flat surface and then jump up and take off. Because if you think about it, they will sometimes land on the ground and then they crawl over to like, say, the foot of a cow and bite their foot and then drink that blood or they land on the back and crawl on the back. Um, most bats that they get on the ground have to kind of wiggle their way to get some height. They need to climb back up. So, but our bat's going to have a tail. So I'm going to give them a little furry bat butt here and the tail which is, which is bones, it's part of the, the backbone. And then the skin connects like so. So I'm gonna take them off here and get you guys a little closer look at their bat. So this is our basic bat. So you can make all sorts of additions to the details and stuff. Um, one of the things that you might wanna do, it makes it look kind of like the bats are stretched out. You can add just a, a little bit of extra lines in there. It makes it look like the wings have stretched out a little bit, gives it a little bit more dynamicness. Um, dynamicness, I don't think that's a word. Um, so we, we've got all the little pieces. Um, again, I gave, I gave my bat a little leaf nose. He's got some smaller ears, but not too small. I could have given him really huge ears. So there's lots of different ways you can draw a bat. Now I'll show you one little thing that I did with one I drew earlier 
that I thought was kind of fun. Um, this one was done on a little heavier paper. I took it out. I folded it a little bit. So kind of looks like he's flying. So I folded it along each of the lines. So I got a little flying bat. So now that you learned that, you got you can uh, celebrate Bat Week, which we're doing right now. You could also uh, make some decorations for Halloween. So I hope everybody enjoyed. Any questions? Thank you so much, Jennifer, for sharing that with us. I think everyone was drawing. I didn't see any questions. <laughs> I saw a lot of eyes and and people of uh, people watching, but I think they were actively drawing. So good, cool. good. If and you've drawn a bat while you're doing this. Please post it on on the Facebook comments because we'd love to see a picture of the work that you do. And we will repost this um, so that you can watch it over if you feel like I was going too fast. We only have a little bit of time, so I have to do it within the time lot. But yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for walking us through that tutorial. I hope it gets everyone in the Halloween spirit. If you're going to be joining us this weekend at the Bell Museum, we, we still are going to have some cool Halloween stuff going on at the museum. Stop by the Touch and See Lab. At 11 o'clock, they're going to be dissecting owl pellets. And at one o'clock, they're going to be showing everyone some cool flesh-eating beetles. So there's lots to see and do at the museum. There's also lots to see and do to sit down and, and draw your own bat as you get ready for, for Halloween. We hope you all have a wonderful Friday and a, a safe and happy Halloween. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.